me they're not at the same level. Are those flats? Ultimately, this wasn't giving in any direction. I both feel she's trying too hard, but also not enough. Ooh. Hello, my beautiful life brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I know there's a lot of new people that just joined, so this might be the first time you're seeing one of these videos. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race Belgique episode one. That is right, we are gonna let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And today we will be looking at not only one, not two, but three looks. We will be looking at their entrance look, we will be looking at their performance look, and we will be looking at their runway looks and letting you know my thoughts on what I would have done differently, how I would have done things better, and do they get a fab or not. I will also be giving a fab and drab of the week, so watch to the end to find out who my favorite queen of this week was. But without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we are gonna start with their entrance looks, and first to walk into the room is Miss Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan is coming in in this teal and pink dress with all of the little cutouts and all of the rhinestones. Uh, she's paired it with this big poofy ostrich feather backing and tall ponytail. It is definitely giving you Las Vegas fantasy. My initial thoughts on this outfit is that it definitely feels drag queen. It definitely feels like old school drag. And maybe that's the type of queen that Sarah Logan is. As this is the first episode, it's a little bit harder to judge, but I do like that she is giving you personality with this outfit. It doesn't feel so cookie cutter. Sometimes with these entrance outfits, especially during season one, people were just like not really giving personality. And this does give personality. Now the question is, do I like the look? Well, I will say that it does look expensive and well put together, but it is not really to my taste. At the same time that we will have to be judging these looks a little bit differently because this isn't the US season and the queens are not at the same level, sorry to say. Uh, with that in mind, I will say that she's definitely giving you Something. Is it the best? No. Is it the worst? Also no. Ultimately, I do think it's good enough for an entrance outfit because it is letting you know who she is early on. Now, if she serves something else later in the season, that is a whole different story. But for right now, I'm gonna go with a soft bow. Next to walk into the workroom is Alvida. And Alvida turns the corner holding this really crazy artistic mask in front of her face. She's also paired it with this artistic gown um, and it's definitely reading like this artistic painting. Now, if you watch my other video where I broke down the queens before the cast was leaked, if you didn't, go ahead and click right over there. We already realized that Alvida is more of this like artistic queen where she likes to do things with like graffiti and things like that. And this is really giving that. Uh, on top of it, when she lifts her mask, her, make her makeup and mug looks stamped and she looks freaking fierce. She's paired it with this like mohawk, which has got a little bit of that color tonality to it. And all in all, this works really well together. It's giving me personality, it's giving me elegance, and it's giving me Alvida. And I know that just from watching her Instagram and looking at this, and if I can get that already through one look and one episode, she is doing it and she is doing it well. All in all, I love this look. It is fierce and it is definitely a fab. Next to walk into the room, workroom, it's Star. And Star is coming out in this orange feather piece with nude illusion backing, as well as uh, big jewels, necklaces, and this short red hair. Even though it is episode one, this is the third episode I am making on Drag Race Belgique, and I did break down the promo looks. And during the promo looks, I said that Star has an accessory issue, and we are seeing it right here and right now. She's got every jewel on, and she thinks that this, this jewel makes her look so much better and so much more glam. But honestly, I feel like it really dates her. I feel like she can really you lose the necklace and lose the earrings, and this outfit would be a lot better. I feel like there's a little bit too much going on. The outfit itself with the feathers and the nude illusion is quite nice. I don't know what it says about her specifically, but it is a nice outfit. But then she goes ahead and pairs it with this little hair. And I wish the hair was 
bigger. Imagine this with a whole bunch of feathers to give you more of that like showgirl uh, fantasy. Right now it just feels like really tiny comparative to this big outfit. All in all, I feel like she this was a little bit of a missed opportunity. We don't get to know enough about her. Personally, as an entrance outfit, I'd like to see something that's a little bit more unique, a little bit more personal. And this is not it. I wish she would have come out with an outfit with some stars on it. I know it's a little bit gimmicky, but it would have really read, especially for a first outfit, because you're not going to really get that opportunity to do something like that in the challenges. On top of it, you'll find out later that she's a little bit more of a campier queen. So I think that, you know, being a full stars would have made sense. All in all, I feel like this is really missing the star personality. It's got too many accessories and I don't like this hair with this outfit. So for all of those reasons, I'm going to have to go with a drab. Next up, we have Madame Yoko and Madame Yoko is coming out in this short silver dress uh, with these sort of little diamonds on the shoulders. She's paired it with this mask and this sort of flat wig. Initially, I'm not sure about this outfit. I do like the mask. I think it gives you a little bit of that moment and that like cool. When she pulls it off, it wasn't really giving anymore. I feel like she could have done something a lot more with the hair, maybe some crystals and some of the diamonds, like the diamonds that are on her shoulders. I wish they were on her head. The dress itself is very simple and very plain and it does feel like uh, you bought it at the mall and put some jewels on it. That being said, I do like the shoulder, I do like the jewels that are on the shoulders and I just wish there was a lot more of them to make it feel a lot more regal. On top of it, she decided to pair it with this like little booty, which I feel makes her look shorter. I wish this would have just been like a simple pump to would have elongated her leg a little bit more. I feel like she is a short queen. Maybe it's just the TV, but if she is a short queen, you got to get all that height you can get. Put some hair up there, put show all that leg, really give you that 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 moment, you know? But more importantly than all of those things, good or bad, is what does this say about your drag? And my answer is I don't know. There is nothing that it says. Maybe because she's singing Diamonds Are Forever, she's got a couple of diamonds on her. But so what? Like, you could have been singing any song. Like, what does this say about Madame Yoko? And that's where I'm struggling. I could forgive a, like, not the best outfit if it gives me personality. And this one doesn't give me personality, and it's not the best outfit. Ultimately, it's not doing enough for me. And since it's not doing enough for me, I'm going to have to go with a drab. <laughs> Next to walk into the room room is Gabbana and Gabbana is coming in in this black and gold outfit with pointy shoulders and pointy hair. She turns around to reveal her little naked buttocks. So first things first, I do like this outfit. I think that the black and gold pair off of each other and it definitely gives you that fierce fantasy. I feel like Gabbana's fell into the same tropes that other queens did, which is where is the personality in it? Where is the Gabbana-ness of it? Because this, although this is a beautiful outfit, I could feel like a lot of queens would want it and want to wear it. Heck, I'd want to wear that outfit. And that's the problem. If it could fit me and Gabbana, then it might not be strong enough for an entrance look. It could be strong enough for a stage look. And I'm sure she's going to get a lot of good use out of this outfit because it is a good outfit. If I did change one thing, I would have changed the hair. The hair looks super expensive and super well made. I'm just not sure that this is the hair I would have went with with this outfit. I would have probably went with something that was taller and more back and maybe even black so that it doesn't actually touch the shoulder pieces. I hate when you have these big shoulder pieces and the hair, it like blends into it. What I would have loved to see Gabbana do is done something uh, to her Spanish heritage. She mentions that in her Meet the Queens. She's got that in her promo looks. So I feel like as an entrance, a first entrance, it, it should have been that moment. That being said, I do like this look and I would want to wear it. And so therefore, as much as I'm bitching about it, I can't really fault her for it. And that's why I still ultimately have to go and give her a fab. 
Next up, it's La Verve. And La Verve is coming out in this black latex outfit with her dominatrix whip. She's definitely giving you bitch in charge. So as you've probably heard me say, I always say that the entrance outfit should give you personality. And this does give personality. The question I have is, is this La Verve's personality? When you hear her talk, she mentions funerals and death. And so then I'm like, how does this match with dominatrix? On top of it, when we look at some of her other outfits and some of her Instagram posts, they definitely give you more of that like fortune teller cemetery vibe. So I feel like this is not the right personality for an entrance look. I would have loved to her for her to come as like, some all in black in mourning, you know, or as the fortune teller herself. I feel like this is an outfit she had in her wardrobe and just wore, and it's probably really good for a performance, but not as an entrance to Drag Race. On top of it, it doesn't even really fit very well. It's kind of loose in certain places. It doesn't feel expensive. You can buy a cheap outfit, but get it tailored and it can look a lot better. All in all, this, isn't doing it for me either. And for La Verve, I'm gonna have to go with a trap. Next up, it's Lulu Velvet. And Lulu Velvet is coming in in this red velvet hood. She's giving you a little bit of Little Red Riding Hood. She pulls it off to give you this big poofy dress. The first thing I will say is I love that she decided to go with velvet. I placed to her name and it is a first entrance. So I think that this is the type of thing that you should be doing and what honestly Star should have been doing and some of these other queens to be honest. So I like that she's playing with her name, trying to give you a, a memorable moment of like, this is who she is. Now, I like this sort of cape moment uh, that she comes out with, and I love that she rips it off to reveal to something. The problem is, is I don't like the dress underneath. Does it match with her hair and her earrings and everything else? Yes. I feel like it should have been a different shape. I think a bodysuit, some sparkles and things like that uh, would have really aided to this. She said that she's also a burlesque queen, so I would have loved some lace and some ruffles in there to give you that burlesque attire because yes, she's playing with her name, but she's not fully going full on to her personality because it's not just the name, it's also the personality. All in all, this is a little bit middle of the road, but because she's thinking conceptually and ultimately she looks pretty decent, I'm gonna have to go with a soft bag. Next up, it's Chloe Clark. And Chloe Clark is coming out in this big butterfly green dress and she's paired it with big hair. And this is definitely a reading expensive. Right off the bat, you can see that she put some money into this outfit. Now I know Chloe Clark outside of the show, as in like we've both been following each other for some time. So I was actually surprised to see that this was her entrance outfit, not because it isn't beautiful, it is beautiful, but this is not what I was expecting from Chloe Clark. Chloe Clark sometimes got more of that little bit of an edge for it, and this feels a little bit like pretty pretty. I would have expected this more for like a finale eleganza than I did a entrance look, but I mean, it is making a statement. So I took it upon myself to send her a little bit message and asked her what was up with this outfit. And she basically said that actually she had something completely different planned. It didn't arrive in time. And so she had to pull something from her closet. And when she said that, it made sense to me. I was like, no wonder. That being said, if you have this in your closet, mama, just like, I don't have anything this extravagant, this beautiful in my closet. Like if I was on Drag Race, I would definitely be turning it up in terms of the looks, but this is not just stuff I have lying around like Miss Chloe Clark. Despite it not giving the personality I know Chloe Clark to be, she's definitely making an entrance and she's definitely making a statement. And because of those reasons, I'm gonna have to give her a bag. And last to walk into the workroom, it's Morphe. And Morphe decided to go in a completely different direction. She's coming out in a head to toe fur suit filled with rips and disheveled hair. Her makeup is crazy and she is definitely giving you a statement. What I like about this is that everybody tries to go pretty, tries to go fierce, tries to go in one direction and Morphe went the complete opposite. She's definitely giving you an impression. I just don't know if it is the right impression. That being said, having looked at her Instagrams and things like that, Morphe is this weird conceptual 
psycho queen. So this kind of makes sense for her personality. On top of it, if you actually look at the garment and look at the details, you see that it's not just like simply ripped, but it's got all of these like weird intricate details into it. And it's definitely like actually really thought through and put together. So it's got definitely layers. You can see that she was trying to make it look bad, but on purpose. And that's what I love about it. Personally, I think that the outfit itself is actually kind of cool. I just wish she would have done something different with her face and her hair to sort of just like help marry it all together because it just kind of felt like, oh, I just woke up and randomly went on. Morphe will definitely be challenging us in terms of is it cool or is it weird or what is it? And I love that because I do come to Drag Race for inspiration. That being said, is it a fab or is it a drab? Well, just for the pure craziness of it, I'm gonna have to go with a fab. Next, we are looking at the talent show. But before we get into the season two queens, the season one queens are back to be the audience members. And of course, they're walking the runway. So of course, we have to also rate their looks. First up is the pork chop of season one, Brittany Van Botox. Now, Brittany is coming out in this big tool dress paired with this square hair and the biggest eyelashes. Now I will say that what I love about Britney is that she sticks to her aesthetic, she sticks to her drag. You know when she came on her first season people were thinking that she was like too clown and were making fun of her. As she continues to do drag you realize that actually no this is this is her drag, this is her style and but now it feels a little bit more purposeful. In just a year's time you can see that even though she's got the same wig and the same aesthetic she's able to clean it up and become a little bit more you know, snatched in that sense. I do like that she decided to go with this hair because it does call back to her original look. And so it makes people memorable. And especially as a first out queen, you want to be remembered. Um, so why not call back to one of your own original looks? Now the dress itself, I do like the shape of it. I do think it is really cool. I just don't like the pattern. I find that the pattern is very distracting and I feel myself reading the pattern as opposed to like looking at the dress. All in all, it's not my style of dress but knowing Brittany and her style of drag, I think this is one of the better looks she's pulled out and that's why she's getting a five. Next up, it's Amanda Tears. And Amanda Tears is coming out in this like iridescent chiffon dress uh, paired with this orange wig flats. Are those flats? Ooh, I don't know if they're flats, but if they're a heel, they are the tiniest heel of life. Sorry, Amanda, uh, this is not it. First off, this dress gives her no form. Now, I'm not saying that everything needs to be va 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 voom all the time, but give me something. And right now it's giving me a little bit of potato sack. It's a nice fabric, but that's kind of where it starts and ends. It doesn't give me more than that. And you're a season one queen. You're supposed to come back with a vengeance. Show us what we were missing. And looking at this, I'm not seeing it. Then on top of it, she pairs it with this wig. This wig has nothing to do with this dress. I wish it was a different color. I wish it was a lot more styled. It just kind of really feels like, you know, she probably came from another city, came and filmed this and had to get ready really quickly. I wish it would have been bigger, better, and made it more of a moment. It is for all of those reasons, I have to say to Amanda Tears, it's a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Edna Sorgesen, and Edna is coming out in this pink bodysuit with this bow and these pink gloves. She's paired it with these glasses and this mauve hair. I will say the outfit itself is quite simple, but it looks nice, and more importantly, it fits her well. I do think that this is a nice choice of color because it definitely pops on the runway and definitely grabs your attention. Now, I do think it's a little bit too plain for a comeback look. It's your one chance to be on season two. Like, give me a little bit more look. She's then paired it with these glasses and these hair, and I feel like all three are competing against each other. The glasses are giving you a little bit school teacher, the hair is giving you a little bit rock and roll, and the outfit is giving you businesswoman on the run. I just feel like it's all three things mixed together. Just don't really go. I would have loved for her to lose the glasses and done like some big, uh, pink updo. She's, uh, she had some several really nice wigs last season. So I'm wondering why she didn't bring one of those, even if they were a repeat. And the outfit I wish was a little bit more embellished with some lace or some rhinestones or something to give me that extra like drag race oomph. I feel like this is 
not there and I'm starting to really question how much time these queens had to get ready for this because so far none of them are really like wowing me. All in all for Egna, I'm going to have to go with a soft drab. <laughs> Next up is Mocha Bonnet, and Mocha Bonnet is coming out in this black cape thing with this crazy uh, braided hair, and she's riding a Segway? Are those what those called? A hoverboard. I don't know what the hell is going on. The first thing I thought was, why is she riding a hoverboard? I've seen people use hoverboards in drag before, but generally they are hidden behind a big skirt to make you like feel like you're floating and going around. This time we see it, so I'm just like wondering, what is the purpose? It just feels like super gimmicky for absolutely no reason. She could have lost it and given us just like a fabulous strut. If she was gonna do a hoverboard, it has to be related to the look, and I don't get what this has to do with the look, to be honest. Uh, she ultimately, she reveals her black cape thing, only to realize that it is a dress that goes to the floor. Now, I like the idea of this, uh, that it goes from, from jacket to cape, but all in all, what, what came underneath it just felt mismatched. It really felt like a collection of things. She got this black cape with this white bodysuit with this gold jewelry, with this very ornate hair and this hoverboard. It just felt like she went in her closet, took a whole bunch of stuff, threw it together to make a look. Now, that would be fine if it was for the clubs, but for Drag Race Belgique, for your comeback moment, I would have expected you to put like a really great look together. You know what, and if you didn't have anything, or if they didn't give you enough time to prepare, surely you could have either borrowed something, or you could have used something that you've used on one of your red carpets that you didn't get to show on the Drag Race. This was just felt to me like a bunch of eclectic pieces thrown together. Honestly, I was not living for it, and that is why she is getting a drab. <laughs> Next up is Valenciaga, and Valenciaga is coming out in this pink bodysuit with these red gloves and red boots. She's got this giant red heart in the middle of her, and she is definitely giving you love. Initially, I like this outfit. I feel it's definitely a little bit more club kid, a little bit more camp, which is very different from Valenciaga because she tends to want to go more into like the fashion route. So I love that she's pushed herself and went in this direction. If I saw her body and the outfit, I would think it is fantastic. The problem I have is with the hair. I just find that the hair just doesn't match the outfit at all. I wish she would have went with like a bright red updo uh, because this hair just feels very pedestrian for this such avant-garde look. That being said, I think a wig is probably the easiest thing to change and it is just more of a styling issue more than it is an outfit issue and some of these people have outfit issues. So that is why for Miss Valenciaga, I am gonna go with a Next up, we have Peach, and Peach is coming out in this uh, head-to-toe denim attire. She's got denim ripped jeans uh, with a denim top and a denim boa. She's paired it with this slick back blonde ponytail, and she is definitely giving you 90s bitch fantasy. Give me a little bit of Christina Aguilera and Dirty video, and it's also giving me a little bit of Britney Spears. She's definitely doing pop princess. Now, I like this because it is a look from head to toe and it definitely feels put together. Now, is it the craziest, most avant-garde thing? No, but having seen the season, this feels like peach. You know what I mean? It feels like something she would give and it definitely feels like a cohesive look. And because of all of those reasons, I am gonna have to go and give her a five. Next, we have Mademoiselle Boop, and Mademoiselle Boop is coming out in this black dress with these strategic cutouts. She's got black gloves and black hair. I will say I was really surprised to see Mademoiselle Boop in this outfit because it really feels like elegant and put together. And Mademoiselle Boop previously was giving you more of that cabaret vibe. So it just does feel like a slightly different departure for her. That being said, the outfit itself looks quite beautiful. I love the cutouts. I love the regalness of it. I, no, I love the sophistication of it. It definitely feels like a Mademoiselle Boop 2.0. And I think that that's good. On top of it, she's kept her black so it does feel distinctly her. Now the things I would change is the 
breast area she decided to go with no breast which i understand considering the shapes and everything but i would have loved to see a little bit of contour or something to give me a little bit more of that illusion on top of it her hair i feel like her hair is too flat and there's not enough going on if she wanted to go with flat hair that's totally fine i could totally see it but imagine it with like a little pussycat wig with rhinestones all around the edge i think that just would have taken up to the next level or even some like big black updo would have also done really well ultimately there's a few little details that i would change but even with the details that she chose i think she did a pretty good job and therefore she's gonna get a five. next up it's suzanne and suzanne is coming in hiding herself at first to reveal that she got these giant arms with spikes coming out of them, wearing this slinky dress that's all see-through filled with cutouts. Now, this is what I was waiting for. The queens come back and they're supposed to show us something. And Suzanne wasn't necessarily always the fashion queen of her season, but this is a moment. She's coming back with a bang and she's showing you why she needs to be on All Stars. I love the spikes. I love the attitude. I love the, the reference. She's even decided to match her hair to the outfit and I think that's so smart because the thing is is that Suzanne doesn't wear wigs which is not my favorite I love I prefer somebody who does wear wigs but that being said sometimes when you wear your natural hair it sometimes clashes with the outfit but this time you can see that she probably got her hair dyed specifically for this moment and I think that was so smart for a comeback look all in all she kicked it out of the park and this is the type of drag I was expecting for a comeback look uh, and that's why for Suzanne she is definitely getting a Ah. Next up is Athena Sorgelikis and she's coming out in this black latex bodysuit covered with this big ruffled polka dot dress with slick black hair. Now I will say that this is maybe not the most crazy innovative uh, look but she looks good. I love the contradiction between the hard latex underneath with this soft feminine dress on top it's really giving you that contrast in colors but also that contrast in styles and is really that clash on top of it she decided to pair it with this like slick black hair that is giving you a little bit of that matrix moment but it works with the leather that's underneath it you can totally see that if she takes that off it would be like this super punky matrix vibe which i also think is quite cunt was i expecting more from her yes she was the only one that was really giving drag queen a run for her money in my opinion so i was expecting her to get to this winner's level and i don't know that this is necessarily doing that that being said she does look good and she is looking better than some of the other ones most of the other ones and that is why she is definitely gonna get a ah. And finally, we have the winner from season one, Drag Quen. And Drag Quen is coming out in this two-piece sort of suit. She's got the high shoulders all the way up to her ears in this brown jacket, uh, paired with these green and brown skirt with this high slit. She's paired it with this black updo that goes all the way to the top with her signature mug. I don't get this look. As a winner, she should have come out strong and should have shown people why she is the winner. And I feel like, yes, she's going in her kooky style, but this is very not it. I'm not loving this. I don't get this whole suit dress moment. I don't understand what it's supposed to be. On top of it, she's paired it with this hair and the hair is cool, don't get me wrong, I love the hair. But how does this two match? I'm like, what is the fantasy? What is the concept? What is the the moment? And for me, I think that that is sort of like an ongoing issue I have with Drag Race Belgique is that so many of the queens, when they don't have a theme, kind of just like throw everything out the window and just come up with a look that they want, as opposed to thinking, what would my drag character give you? What, what would that be? How do I show my personality in this one outfit? All in all for Drag Quen, not only was this like not great, it was also not the best of her season. And she won her season. So she just really needs to step up and show us why she's the winner. And that is why for Drag Quen, I'm definitely gonna have to go with a drab. <laughs> 
enough about the old queens. Let's get back to the new queens. Let's get back to that talent show. First up, we have Sarah Logan. She's coming out with this big feather boa with all of the jewels and earrings paired with this blonde bombshell hair. You can see a little bit of the costume peeking through her entrance and it's all encrusted in diamonds. Now this is what I'm saying about making something cohesive. Sarah on her first look, uh, when she came in, she was giving you that showgirl Vegas fantasy and, and now in her talent show, she's giving you showgirl fantasy. So they make sense together. She's continuing that theme. On top of it, I will say that her makeup looks amazing and I will say that she paints really young. If you look at her like outer drag compared to her in drag, it is 100% a huge transformation. The, the talent itself I felt was lacking a little bit. Um, I was not wowed. On top of it, it made it a little bit more difficult because we have several queens doing showgirl or burlesque talents. So you can't help but compare yourself. But I am not necessarily critiquing the performance itself. I am going to be critiquing how much does the outfit work with the performance. And the thing is, the outfit works really well with the performance. It tells you the style, it tells you who she is, as well as you can see that it was made for a performance like that. And that's what I love to see in a performance outfit. Make it specifically for this and not something you just randomly pulled out of your closet. All in all, I like this look and I like where it's going for it for a performance outfit. And that is why for Sarah Logan, she is getting it. Hey. Bye. Next up is Alvida and Alvida is coming out and doing this sort of punk rock cyber outfit and immediately I love it. It is so cool, it is such a moment and it is so grand. I love it and I want it. And we didn't even get to the talent yet. Then we find out that her talent show is flame throwing, whirling fire, she's playing with fire, it is everywhere and this is a talent show to remember. Oh my god, so so cool. Now, the thing I will say is that the outfit and the uh, fire show, I don't know how much they really go together in a sense of it is an amazing outfit and it is an amazing uh, talent show. I don't see the correlation between them. I wish if she did the exact same outfit, but did it in a red or an orange or added some little flame details into it to kind of like give you a, a sneak peek as to what you're gonna get. I think that would have just like brought it up a notch. But honestly, both from a talent perspective and from an outfit perspective, I think they're perfection. So even though they don't necessarily match to the way I would want them to match, personally, like I said, for a talent show for Drag Race, I would love the outfit to be custom made for the talent you're gonna be doing. And though I do think that this outfit was custom made for her, I just don't know it was custom made for this specific talent. That being said, both her performance and her outfit were individually spectacular. And I know I'm not judging the talent, but it definitely helps when the talent is good. But getting into the look, the look is, like I said, spectacular and I want it. And because of all of those reasons, I don't really care that it doesn't match 100% because she looks freaking good. And that is why she is getting a bad. Next up, it's Star. And Star is doing this sort of like campy cabaret number and she's coming out in this sort of cabaret look, which looks a little bit traditional, but it feels a little bit off. As she's doing her performance, different things start happening um, and that play into her whole attire. She's being super stupid with it and it's kind of actually works. This is the star I was sort of kind of expecting to see, mainly because she is the drag mother of Sarah Jean and Sarah Jean does like to do stupid as well. So I feel like they would go hand in hand. That's why with all of her previous looks, I was always thrown off why what star was doing but this one seems to work she's doing a little bit of cabaret a little bit of camp and the costume seems to work with it is it my favorite costume absolutely not that being said it works for the performance and you can see that this costume was specifically made for this performance and that's what i want to see in a performance attire it's not a runway we don't need every freaking little detail to be perfect we need it to work for the show and this was clearly made with a show in mind where pieces come off when they need to come off and it also lets her build this one character. I did not particularly like the performance nor did I particularly like the outfit individually but once you put them together it makes sense together. It makes sense why this outfit was created that way. And remember we are judging looks and not performance so I'm not going to critique the performance itself even though I gave you my opinion. This outfit served its purpose and helped build the character and that is why for Star's performance outfit I'm going to have to go with a... Ah. Next 
up is Madame Yoko. Madame Yoko for her talent show number is singing. And as she's singing, she comes out in these pants, this shirt, and this really super coiffed hair. I will say that the look is very interesting and very well put together. This, uh, I think, is better than even her entrance look. So you can see that she put some thought into it. I will say that I was a little bit surprised for her to be in pants and a shirt for a singing. Uh, usually when people sing and they're not dancing, you would definitely see them in a ball gown. But she decided to take it into a different direction. But we later find out that the reason why she's gone into this, liter uh, to this direction is that she is giving you this whole message about self-love and uh, labels and things like that because each individual piece comes off to reveal a different word. Now, I think that the message is strong and the concept is good and it adds another dimension to singing because singing can get boring. And also this prevents her, if she hits a wrong note, then she can kind of fall back on the fact that she had a bigger concept, which she did and she could. That being said, the one thing that really bothered me was the way the tattoos were put on. Obviously they were the heel and stick tattoos and I'm assuming she was in a rush because you can see every detail on them. You can see where they were coming off and they just don't really look refined. And I wish it just was overall cleaner in doing it. On top of it, once she started revealing the tattoos, she started with the forehead tattoo, which in my mind should have been the last one to be revealed because it was the one that was the most taken aback. I wish she would have started with one arm, the other arm, the shirt, and then finally her, the one on her head. I feel like she did it a little bit backwards. She gave us the big bang at the beginning and then ended with this back piece, which everybody got a tattoo on their back. At that point, we knew it was coming, right? This one, we would never, never seen coming, even if she'd taken off her whole shirt. Even though it wasn't as clean as I would like it to, I love that this garment was made with this piece in mind. And as well as it, the garment does look very well made. So for all of those reasons, for Madame Yoko's uh, performance outfit, I'm gonna have to give her a... Ah! Next up is Gabbana, and Gabbana is also singing, but in Spanish. She's coming out in this giant swing filled with all of these flowers and she's wearing this flower dress and this big wavy hair. First up, I love that she went to her Spanish roots. This is the part that I felt like she was missing on her entrance look, but I love that she's brought it back here. On top of it, this floral moment was definitely a moment. You saw the stage and you're like, drag, honey. And the dress felt like it was made for this performance and this whole attire. Now, I don't speak that much Spanish, so I don't know it, what the lyrics had to do with this piece, but all in all, as a whole cohesive thought process, it worked for me. Now, I will say that I was expecting a little bit more. I was expecting her to get up and twirl and maybe something would have come off. Just added that extra dimensionality because it did feel a little bit flat at points. So I wish she would have built that into the garment or into that performance. Maybe it would have switched up tempo or something like that just to give you that next level. The part that was bothering the shit out of me out of this outfit was really her lace line. She's got beautiful hair and everything, but I don't know if this was an old wig or one that didn't match her skin tone, but every time they did a zoom in on her face, you saw the lace line. So I think I would have either cut it shorter, but I also blame the editors because like, we're drag queens. You do not need to get up that close. Take a step back and it is good enough. That being said, all in all, for Gabbana, she looks good. And you can see that she knows what she's doing. She's definitely one of those contenders when it comes to being one of the fashion queens of the season. And thank God, because we need one after season one. Even season two is starting to become a little bit questionable. So I'm glad to see somebody like Gabbana there. All in all, she looks good and this was a moment. So despite all of the imperfections, I am still gonna have to give her a fab. Next up is La Verve and La Verve is coming out and doing some fortune telling. This fortune telling actually ends up being a little bit more of a comedy and comedy is such a risk on the talent show. We've rarely ever seen anybody do very well at it. But La Verve definitely did. She was super hysterical and using her garments to play up this character of the fortune teller is so smart and so grand. Now, I did say that I did feel like La Verve was this fortune teller and I wish I had seen that in her entrance outfit. I definitely felt like it was a miss to not show people who you were right off the bat in her entrance look, but I am glad that she brought it back here. She definitely is giving you that fortune teller fantasy and I feel like this outfit probably came from her 
wardrobe. And that's where I'm a little bit lackluster because as much as it works for the performance, I wish it was more. The cape thing, I wish it had some sparkles on it. I wish it glistened a little bit. It just definitely feels like something that she had and didn't get specifically made for Drag Race. Now, it is a performance attire, so you don't necessarily need to get something specifically made, but this is Drag Race and it is your one opportunity. So wouldn't you want to make it as good as possible? Especially that you know that you're gonna end up doing this act probably several times. So why not invest in a good piece right away? That being said, the whole attire did give me the character, but it didn't add anything to the performance. She didn't pull anything out of her sleeve. She didn't take off her hat and something come out of it. I wish she just would have taken it to the next level and made the uh, performance interact with the garment. That being said, her performance was excellent and she was definitely one of the better performances, but we are rating the looks. And since we were rating the looks, it just wasn't enough for me. And that's why for La Verve, I'm gonna have to go with a drab. <laughs> Next up is Lulu Velvet, and Lulu Velvet is doing some draglesque, that is drag and burlesque put together. She turns the corner and immediately you're like, oh, she's got this giant headpiece, this giant uh, velvet cover filled with rhinestones, and it's already giving you a moment, and I love that. It's got the velvet, so it ties back into her name and ties back into her entrance outfit. So we're starting to see a theme and she's really playing it up. On top of it, from the sort of burlesque showgirl numbers we've had, this one was the best one. You can clearly see that she's done this a few times and she's very, very comfortable on stage. She ends up taking off her jacket to reveal like this really simple dress underneath, but it was also had all of those little details in it that made it bring up to the next level. You know, you always say that the outfit underneath needs to look as good, if not better, than the outfit on top. And when she came out with this jacket, I was like, oh, whatever comes underneath is going to be a disappointment. And you know what? It wasn't. Was it simple? Yes, but it still gave you what it needed to give. And I was fully expecting her to take off the dress. So I was surprised when the feathers came out of the floor and she started to do in all the sparkles because it added that next level of dimensionality and that level of burlesque that's needed. My biggest issue with uh, Lulu Velvet is I wanted more. I wish, wish she had more pieces to sort of like take off because she only did like two or three and this, this number could have went longer for me, honestly. It was brilliant and the costume was brilliantly made for this outfit. And for all of those reasons, I am definitely giving Lulu Velvet a bow. Next up is Chloe Clark. And Chloe Clark for her talent show is doing dance. And for her dance attire, she decided to wear this gold and black outfit filled with rhinestones and all of the jewels. I'm gonna guess that this is probably made by Bang London just because it feels like them. On top of it, this is definitely a great dance attire. It's got a lot of movement to it, it's got a lot of sparkle to it, and it looks super expensive. Chloe Clark is 100% the fashion queen of the season, and we're only on episode one. Now, let's get into the dancing. She said in the workroom that she's been dancing for 20 years, so having said that, you set the bar so high for yourself that she was bound to fail, and fail she did. I spoke to Chloe a little bit, and she basically said that actually she didn't mean to say that she's been dancing for 20 years, she meant to say she hasn't danced for 20 years, which makes a little bit more sense. But Chloe's mother tongue is not French, so she probably made that slip up and didn't even realize it until she watched it back on the show. That being said, regardless of what you think of her performance, we are judging outfits here, and this outfit is spectacular. And you can count on Chloe Clark to turn a look. From a fashion point of view, I can't critique it. It looks amazing, and that is why she's getting a pass. Next up, it's Morphe, and Morphe for her talent show is doing the piano. And she's sitting at the piano wearing this deconstructed dress, this messy hair tied to some IVs. As she's playing the piano in this super emotional way, the IVs start dripping and she's like crying slash tearing from her head. Honestly, I didn't understand this piece. I understood that it was supposed to be an emotional piece. If I had to interpret it, I was like, she is in a psych ward and she decided to just sit down at the piano. Now, maybe that's me making stuff up, but that's the only way that this made sense 
to me. Her piano playing is super beautiful and I like that she went for this emotional route, but I didn't get the whole idea. I didn't get why the IVs were there. I wish there was a little bit more storytelling involved. Maybe she should have started not sitting and kind of walked to it or maybe had a little voiceover or something to give you context of to what's going on. We can see that Morphe is very conceptual, but I think she might have been overly conceptual here because I don't know how many people really understood it. And maybe people did and I'm just stupid and if I'm one of those people, please leave a comment down below and tell me what it was actually supposed to be. From a fashion point of view, it was really hard to see what she was doing. She was sitting down so we didn't even get to see the outfit. The hair was messy and it was really all about the IVs. And even at that, if you were gonna do these IVs, why not like do something with them? Like maybe even add some rhinestones, I don't know. Just made it a little bit more oomph, you know what I mean? All in all, this one wasn't for me. I didn't get it from a talent point of view, nor from a fashion point of view. And that is why I'm gonna have to go and give her a drab. <laughs> and finally, we've made it to the part we've all been waiting for, the runways. The bread and butter of this show. This week's runway theme is National Downpour, where the queens must give us looks inspired by Rain. First off, let's talk about this theme. I think this was a really strange theme. The downpour theme could work. I'm not saying that it couldn't, but what does it have to do with the national part? And you'll see this in the runway where all the queens end up just doing looks inspired by rain. So I feel like this was a strange choice. It was particularly a strange choice for a first runway. A first runway, you like to see a little bit more personality of the queens. We wanted to get to know who they are and who their aesthetic is. So I liked the first runway theme to be a little bit more vague, like hometown hero would have been great, or you know, like they did last year with the red, yellow, and black. That could have also been great because that could go in so many different ways and it doesn't pigeonhole you to a very specific theme. The downpour theme could also be great, but I think I would have saved it for a little bit later in the season. Then it, then it could have worked because then we would have known who these queens are. And now we don't get to know them just yet. Anyway, enough about the theme. Let's get into the looks. First up, it's Sarah Logan. And Sarah Logan is coming in in this sort of pink rain jacket attire with this black latex underpiece filled with glitters all over the place. She's got this giant umbrella hat and raindrops falling off of it. The silhouette is definitely giving you a little bit more avant-garde, a little bit more edgy, and this is really interesting to see from Sarah Logan. This is something different than her last two that were a little bit more showgirly. This is definitely giving you more youthful, more punk, more more, more edge, you know what I mean? All in all, this was a strong look as a first look for this runway. And uh, you know what? It's gonna go a little downhill from here, to be honest. But the part that really surprises me is that this is coming from Sarah Logan. On last week's episode, I gave her my drab of the week, but this episode, she's come to play. The other thing that kind of throws me off is I wasn't expecting this from her, and not in a bad way, but just like I was expecting her to do rain in a showgirl way, and she did it. We'll have to see how things turn out, but I like a queen with a character. So this was maybe a step off for a character, but she looks so damn good. Like, honestly, I love the shapes she's making. I love the choices she's made. I love how avant-garde this looks. And all in all, it's freaking amazing. And that is why she's getting a bad. Next up, it's Alvida. And Alvida is coming out of this black dress made out of umbrella fabric. She's holding a broken umbrella and she's got all of her orange hair wet, sliding all down her body. First, let's talk about the positives. I love this concept of a broken umbrella and the outfit made of umbrellas. I also like the contrast of the orange and the black together. It's really definitely giving a vibe. The part I hate, and I mean hate, is this hair. This hair was just not it at all. It was all in her face, it was all frumpy, and she said that she wanted to give you like this wet look and when you're in the rain, you're always looking disgusting. And I'm like, girl, you're on a fashion show. You can give me a wet look, but make it like slick back and fashion. On top of it, she's got like these beautiful orange hair all over her body, so it kind of feels like her hair is stuck to her, but this, hair over here does not match this hair over here. And it's really a disconnect that is extremely distracting. I wish she would have just changed her hair to like this wet look in the orange and it would have made all the difference. 
That said, that is the only thing that I actually have a critique on on this outfit. I actually do like the outfit itself. Because it is just a wig that I don't like and that I don't think works, I'm still gonna have to go in ahead and give her a fab. Next up, it's Star. And Star is coming out first with an umbrella with a few little raindrops on it. She lifts her umbrella to wear this giant blue overcoat. As she walks, she rips off her overcoat to reveal that she's wearing this like jacket filled with raindrops and this big poofy skirt. Oof. I feel like this is gonna be an ongoing thing with me and Star. I both feel she's trying too hard, but also not enough, if that even makes sense. First up, we will talk about the umbrella. The umbrella itself is just a plain umbrella with like two things stuck to it. I wish if you were gonna give me an umbrella, it better be the most beautiful umbrella in the world. And this just felt like she went to the shop, stuck a couple of things on it and called it a day. So I wasn't loving that. Then her overcoat is super simple. And again, I wish she would have added some of those like little embellishments to it, especially once you see her hair. That hair is perfect, gorgeous, and amazing. Honestly, Alvita should have learned, and that's the type of hair Alvita should have been wearing, to be honest. But we're talking about Star, so let's get back to her. She rips off the overcoat to reveal this outfit underneath, which has got a lot going on. The top part is like this jacket with all of the raindrops on it, but they're all like sort of cartoony, and then she's got this big tulle skirt. All in all, I'm just not sure. I wish that once she took off the overcoat, I like the craziness in patterns. I like that it's, you know, going from quiet to loud. I'm totally cool with it. I'm, 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 I'm buying what you're selling, but I don't get this giant skirt. It could have been just like this beautiful gown, like that went from jacket down, really simple. So you go from big to small. Right now it's just big and it stays big. I don't get what the dress has to do with anything. All in all, there's a lot of tweaks I would make to this outfit. As much as I wanna give her a fab just for the hair, there's just like far too many tweaks that I think are needed to this outfit to really bring it to that level. And that is why I'm gonna to have to go with a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Madame Yoko. And Madame Yoko is coming out in this big gray cloud and she's got little raindrops on her. The outfit itself is a little bit simple, but you can see that it is a coverall. And for a coverall, it is really good. This is where Star should have learned some messages. If Star had some of those little crystals that Madame Yoko had, it would have really taken it up a notch. But Madame Yoko has been doing it right. From her gray cloud comes the sunshine and she's wearing this big bright yellow. Now this yellow does stand out on the runway, so it is definitely giving you sunshine. But here's where you start to lose me. She's not wearing any hair. I get that you're wearing a hat and I'm okay with that, but I wish she would have wore a little pussycat doll wig underneath this hat. On top of it, I don't know what the hat and the medals have to do with anything. She's supposed to be giving you weather and somehow she's giving you a little bit of that military style. I really feel like there's a clash here. If you were gonna give me sunshine, give me sunshine. Why not go in a direction something like Denim did on Canada's Drag Race? That was giving sunshine. Bring me somewhere. And this one didn't. I can go either way with this one because the coverall was a good coverall, but the outfit wasn't that great of an outfit. I mean, it was an okay outfit, but it just didn't follow the theme. More importantly than anything else, the hair really bothered me, or should I say the lack of hair. And it's for that reason I that got the nail in the coffin and I'm gonna give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Gabbana, and Gabbana is coming out in this see-through vinyl dress with a see-through vinyl umbrella. And underneath her vinyl attire is the Belgian flag bikini. The one thing I will say about Gabbana, Gabbana is the only queen that took the national part of downpour. Everybody else just did downpour. So I like that she actually attempted that second part of the prompt. I do think that the outside attire of uh, Gabbana's look is really great. I like the see-through vinyl. I just don't like the inside piece. I wish the inside piece was something else, maybe something a little bit bigger, a little bit more showy. Ultimately, I feel like the bikini wasn't enough. If I was to change this outfit, I probably would have done a simple bodysuit and that would have just given you that extra pop of color that you needed underneath. On top of it, on her vinyl, she's got all of these like black detailing all over the place, which I like. But if she was going for this whole Belgian flag look, it would have been great if all the detailing actually had all three colors on it. So it would have like brought the inside and the outside 
more together. All in all, it was not my favorite, but it was also not my least favorite. And comparative to some of the other looks on the runway, it was actually okay. And since it was just okay, she's gonna get just an okay type mark, and she's gonna get a soft five. Next up, it's La Verve. And La Verve is coming out in this oversized puffer jacket, and she's all tied up, and all you see is her little head sticking through. Initially, you're like, you know that this is gonna be a reveal, and you're kind of wondering what it is. The issue I initially have with it is that La Verve is a bearded queen, and as a bearded queen, you have to watch out so that you don't give too much of a masculine look, and when you only see the beard, it's definitely giving you masculine. That being said, the actual attire itself is definitely avant-garde and definitely au couture, and it's definitely intriguing as to what will happen next. As she takes off her big jacket, you realize that the jacket is the skirt, and I think this is so so genius. It was not at all what I was expecting. I was really fully expecting it to be a normal reveal and this was a reveal to the next level. That said, I do feel like from the waist down, the dress itself is super cool, but it was not matching with the top up. The top, she wasn't really wearing anything, just a couple of jewels and some wet hair. I wish she would have done something to the upper part to really tie it in. Maybe some buckles, some harnesses, and some puffer gloves or something just to, you know, make that garment continue from top to bottom. Right now, it just feels like two individual pieces. I also think that she could have went with a different color hair. I think a gray hair would have worked really well. Again, to continue that thought process from bottom to top. That being said, the garment itself and the transformation was so cool that there's no way I can give her a drab and I'm gonna have to go with a soft fab. Next up, it's Lulu Velvet. And Lulu Velvet is coming out in this giant, big, oversized yellow rain jacket. It's definitely giving you expensive rain jacket, a little bit avant-garde with the shapes and movements that it is going with it. On top of it, she's got all of these like crystals dangling from it as if to be water. I love this outfit because it followed the theme and you got the reference, but it also made it fashion. The question that I was wondering was, is it enough? So I was glad to see when she took it off and gave you a reveal. Unfortunately, I didn't really like the reveal. She was revealing back to sunshine with her little sun pasties and panties. I do like that she went from rain to sunshine, which we've seen a couple of queens do, but I wish that the outfit underneath was a little bit more. Maybe she revealed and it was like, clouds all around her and a little rainbow uh, on her chest with a little sun or so, uh, around her neck or something like that where the clouds were coming out of the rainbow. I feel like she could have added another layer. She, you can see that she put all of her outfit, all of her emphasis on the outside outfit and not enough on the inside outfit. That said, I love the outside outfit. And because I love the outside outfit, I can't give her a drab and I am also gonna go with a soft bag. is Chloe Clark and Chloe Clark is coming out in this black outfit that is very curvy and shapey and it's giving you a little bit of that punk edge. My initial reaction is what does this have to do with rain? I did not understand it at all. As she goes to explain she said that it is inspired by raindrops and the shapes of raindrops and she wanted to go a little bit different with it. When she said that I started to understand her thinking. That said the judges and the general public don't always get to see it so you kind of have to be a little bit more literal. Now I will say that this is a Chloe Clark that I know and this is kind of what I was expecting for an entrance outfit. It's a little bit edgier, a little bit cooler, and is definitely giving you that moment. So when I saw this, I was like, okay, now we got Chloe Clark, finally. That said, I feel like this missed the mark because nobody understood what she was doing. It is by no means a bad outfit. Actually, I think it is the best outfit on the runway. It is the most haute couture, the most thoughtful, and the most well-made. You can see that she spent some money on it. She just missed the concept. Personally, I think that had she just done a few little changes, it could have gone a long way to making this fit the theme a little bit better. First up, I would have changed everything that is like this gray steel to blue so that you could sort of emphasize those water drop feelings so people understand where the reference is coming from. The stuff underneath that is sort of this black latex, if she had done it in yellow, then it would have gotten you that raincoat effect and again, would have 
giving you those synonyms. And then I wish she would have done completely different hair, maybe a headpiece that was a giant like sun shape, uh, even if you did it in a fashion way. I think that then you would have gotten like sun, rain, sun, clouds, and people would have understood the uh, reference a little bit better. It would have been a little bit more camp, but you would have gotten the same look, just in a different color. And then when she went home, she could have, you know, paired it with a different hair and still worn it as she would always wear it. Like I said, all in all, she looks the best out of everybody. And I always say, if you're not gonna follow a theme, you better look good doing it. And Chloe Clark looks good doing it. Even though it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, she is definitely getting a fat. Next up, it's Morphe, and Morphe is wearing this trench jacket with these little raindrop uh, on her sleeves, raindrops on her face, and is walking down the runway. Eww. I don't have a lot to say to this. This looks so pedestrian. I am starting to think that Morphe is a newer queen who has not been doing drag for that long because the looks aren't looking. Like all of them have been just a slight miss. And I was so excited for this queen because on her promo look was so exceptional that I was like comparing her to Chelsea boy. But looking at what she's delivering on Drag Race, I am thoroughly disappointed. I love the way her mind works, but if this is any indication of what's to come, then my guess is that she's not gonna have the skills to pull off some of her big ideas. Now, maybe I'm judging too soon and I really hope I am. So I'm excited to see what comes next, but this is a total miss from head to toe. It's too simple, there's no concept and I don't get it. And it's for all those reasons, it is a drag. <laughs> Y'all, that is it for this week's Runways. And man, that was a big episode and a lot to get through. But uh, we are not done yet. We are getting to the fabs and drabs of the week. First up, we're going to start with the drabs of the week. So who had my drab of the week? My drab of the week this week for the entrance look has to go to... Love Ultimately, this wasn't giving in any direction, and I ultimately just didn't really feel like it fit her personality. My drop of the week for the returning queens has to go to Amanda Aww. Tears. Ultimately, this was not giving on all fronts. Some of the other ones that I gave drabs to at least tried, and this didn't feel like she tried at all. Honestly, eek. What else can I say? And finally, for the runway attire, my Grab of the week, this week has to go to Buffet. It just was a miss from every point. I just don't even have any more to say. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fabs of the week? My fabs of the week this week for the entrance look has to go to Alvida. I love this look. It gave a personality and it looked expensive, which is Two things that all the other queens couldn't match. They were either giving you expensive or they were giving you personality. And I feel like Alvita was the only one to give you both. My fab of the week for the returning queen goes to Suzanne. That is right. I love that she came out and did something different. I love that it was polished and put together. And I love that she outshined even the winner. That is how you make a statement. So congratulations, Suzanne. And for the runway, my fab of the week has to go to Sarah Logan. I was not expecting this. Uh, she really came out of left field and I love this for her. And I hope she continues down this path because I am getting more and more excited about this queen. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Do you agree of who had the fabs and drabs of the week? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of this series. So let's see. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.